Part 2. Crimson Flower. Great Tree Moon. Field of Revenge. With the capture of Aryan Road complete, the Imperial Army moves to invade the Kingdom capital. They plot to send troops toward now vulnerable House Fraldarius territory and plan to attack Ferdiad from two sides. Yes? Oh, it's you, Professor. I was certain it was Hubert coming to drag me back to my duties. Your Majesty, you must know your supreme talents are needed at present. Why not gaze at these documents instead of the sky? Doesn't it? And the worst part is that he's always right, so I can't even argue with him. But that's enough about Hubert for the moment. While I have your attention, I'd like to thank you for your help in that last battle. As you well know, I'm perfectly capable of commanding the army by myself. However, when you're around, it's somehow different. I'm not sure I can properly explain it. I suppose your perspective on the battlefield is simply sharper than mine. When you're devising tactics and tricks for us, it's almost as though you can read the enemy's mind. There's no getting around it. Your talent for strategy far exceeds my own, I'm quite jealous, in all honesty. Is that a fact? Well, if you insist. I suppose a flower from another's field is always more beautiful. I'll admit, I think of you as rather detached. So to hear that you have emotions such as jealousy is... something of a relief. I can't deny it. Ever since I underwent those procedures, I have certainly distanced myself from the ordinary world. Friends. That word somehow doesn't seem adequate. Besides, we've been friends for a long time, you and I. By now, we're so much more than that, at least in my mind. You know, instead of Edelgard, you can call me just... L, if you so please. That's what my parents and closest sisters used to call me when I was little. Now there's no one left who calls me L. But with you, well, I think I could allow it. In fact, it would mean a great deal to me. Why? Hmm. Well, you have stood beside me and shared my burdens. As I said, you are much more than a friend. In truth, you are like family to me. I suppose that's why. So, Orion Road has fallen. Rodrigue. I swear that I will not allow your death to be in vain. The scouts have just now returned. Seems the Imperial Army is marching toward the Kingdom capital. Are you certain about this, Dimitri? As King, do you think it wise to intercept them yourself? No need to worry yourself. Even if I am defeated, the Blathed Bloodline will live on. And the Kingdom's territory has never been rich in resources. If the castle falls under siege, our loss is inevitable. I will deploy my army onto the plains and wait for the enemy. Please, position your forces so that they can flank the Imperial Army. Yes. Given the present situation, making the plains our battlefield is a logical choice. I have no objection. However... There is only one person I am after. I have no interest in any other prey. I will take you at your word. 
Erasing the other child's existence is my task, and mine alone. I will get you back, Mother. I promise. What do you think, Lady Edelgard? Will they shut themselves inside of Ferdiad? They will try to intercept us. Of course, Ferdiad will not fall so easily. Even so, if we were to cut off their supply line with a large army, it would eventually fall. It makes much more sense for them to wager everything on a victory at the Tail Team Plains. The same plains where the so-called Divine Saros defeated Nemesis, the King of Liberation, in a comeback victory over a thousand years ago. And about 400 years ago, the hero Lug created the kingdom by defeating the Emperor of the Time on those very plains. Their goal must be to recreate that scene. Yes. I suppose so. Although the Imperial Army is powerful, if we were to compare the strength of our best to the best of the Knights of Seros, we would likely come up short. The Kingdom's Army and House Blathed are also renowned for their unmatched persistence. On the battlefield, it can be assumed that their one and only goal will be to strike you down. Are you telling me to stay off the battlefield? Naturally. You are their aim, Your Majesty. You must know it only makes sense to keep you out of their reach. And you must know that, at a time like this, I absolutely cannot withdraw. <sighs> of course I know that. That is why I will refrain from asking you again to stay away from the battlefield. The Immaculate One, descendants of the Ten Elites, and other extremely fearsome foes await us. But with the help of our friends, we have a chance of defeating them. We're the only ones who can. Within our group, I am included among those with the kind of strength we need to win. I absolutely will not remove myself from the front lines. Professor, you have that same strength as well, whether or not you realize it yet. Please, don't get yourself killed trying to protect me. Until the very end, we'll survive this trial together. Understood? capital we're coming for you whoa that sounds familiar have I said that before yeah let's do it professor I just got to get my muscles prepped and ready first they used to call my father the shield of Fargus now he's gone, and Aryan Road has fallen. Yet the Knights of Saros remain, as does the boar. What terrifies me most is his stubbornness. He'll keep on fighting to the last man. He's a monster. I've seen it firsthand. The war is at its end. Has the time finally come that I might kill you? It is true. Those petulant fleas must be picked off one by one. They are nothing if not persistent. I wonder what the captain would say if he knew we were planning to take down Lady Rhea. Lady Rhea and Captain Gerald went back pretty far. But hey, it's your decision. I'm sure he would have understood in the end. Now, onward to Ferdiad. I'm ready. What the... Ugh. 
Professor, what should I do? Everyone's acting like this is leading up to the final chapter in a book or something. Is the battle ahead really going to be that climactic? Am I not taking it seriously enough? Oh. You think so? All right, I believe you. I'm ready for this. I am. Yeah, we're going to win. What do you say? I've been thinking about how we've got our own ideas about justice. And so does the kingdom. And what's coming? It's not just a battle between us and them. It's our ideals that are fighting. Whoever wins will say they were right, and the other side was wrong. And I get it, that's how it goes. But nobody's willing to talk or compromise, so we'll fight to the death to prove the other guys wrong. It won't be an easy battle, but let's make sure we come back alive. Right, Professor? to survive. But please, please don't die out there, Professor. <laughs> That's right. Me personally, I take no issue with attacking Lady Rhea. But the eagerness of my fellow nobles does vex me, despite so many grand displays of piety from them in the past. It gives the impression that faith is little more than a tool they use to maintain their positions of power. If it is no longer useful as a tool, then I expect the nobles will cease to give it any credence. What is a noble's duty, truly? I hope we will discover an answer in the conflict ahead. What? Once the kingdom capital falls, all of Fodlin will be united under the banner of the Empire. Isn't it thrilling? We're going to make history. Yes, of course. I'll do my best. Our opponents may be strong, but with you on our side, we can't lose. Before I left the church, I recall Lady Rhea saying something strange. Something about how she would recover her mother, no matter what. Do you think Lady Rhea's mother is buried in Garrick Mock or something? said that before. All right, I'm fired up and ready to go. Hmm. A moment, please. How about Ferdiad, the kingdom capital? From the Empire's perspective, it seems like the northernmost edge of the world. 
I have come a long way following you and Edelgard. To think, what if I had succeeded Duke Iyer as Prime Minister? I would never have had all these experiences. I hope that is true. I used to be so naive. For now, let us join together and walk the path that Her Majesty lays out. Hey, I could use a hand. That reminds me, if the enemy forces come to intercept us, chances are high that we'll clash on the Tail Team Plains. The Tail Team Plains were the site of a famous battle in ancient times, right? That's what some book type at the library said, at any rate. Okay. Rumor has it, King Dimitri is always accompanied by a man from Dusker with a terrifying face. And what's more, this man is said to be so huge, he's often mistaken for a bear. Professor, I have worries. What have I been achieving? When the war is ended, I will be returning to Bridget with many, uh, much new potential. But have I had enough growth to become the ruler? This is the truth. I will fight with all of my strength so that I will know with certainty. Bridget pride, techniques, and culture. I will be showing all of the world who we are. Professor? Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. The time has finally come to set out for the kingdom capital, Ferdiad. I thought the same thing last month. But I still can't believe the plan was to ambush Aryan Road. I know it couldn't be helped, but even I wasn't let in on the secret. Me! Not gonna lie, that hurt a little. Ah well, let's forget about that. I'm praying for your victory and your safe return. Seems like the war is gonna end soon. Once the dust settles, It'll be back to rolling in fat stacks of gold for me. All right. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I thought you were going to attack the Kingdom Capital, but you attacked Orion Road instead? Well, you sure had me fooled. She's a tricksy one, that Lady Edelgard. But this time, you really are going for the capital, right? I wish you the best of luck. Fiancé back home, and I promised her I'd come back alive. No matter how tough the fight gets, I won't die. I have to survive and make it back to her. to the kingdom and to the church. Under the empire, an era of peace would begin. Many people are cleaving to this notion, but I wonder if it would really end up as such. Such resolve. It's convincing to say the least. I wonder, was the collapse of Aryan Road really the church's doing? Or could it be that, hmm. Never mind me. Just thinking aloud. Yes, sir. I'm sure my father will be waiting in Ferdiad. If I can avoid it, I'd rather not fight him. But I don't think my father is capable of betraying the royal family. Of betraying Dimitri. I must be prepared to do... 
what I have to. Right. Professor, let's make sure we win. The idea of defeating Raya is beginning to feel more like a reality. Some may say that I'm returning her goodwill with betrayal, but I believe I've worked off my debt. The real problem is a certain someone else. That's right. She was my partner, after all. I haven't seen her since leaving the Knights. I can see her coming to slaughter me, driven by her mixed emotions of love and hate. The Knights of Saros are led by the Archbishop herself, and the Kingdom Army is led by none other than the King. I have faith that the Imperial Army will prevail, but it still makes my knees feel a bit wobbly. <laughs> We're almost to the Kingdom capital of Ferdiad. Just imagine, the war might almost be over. But is it true that Aryan Road was annihilated? What in the world happened? What is the Saros Church, really? I always have, and I always will. Let's see. Ah! Did you want something? Sorry, I was a bit lost in thought. Or, rather, I was thinking about work. My brother had sorted out all his personal affairs. Apparently, he'd forgotten about his work duties. So now I've got a ton more work on my plate. Oh, brother, why must you be so careless? Once this war is over, I'm gonna take a vacation and get some well-earned rest back home with my mother. Professor, once you set out on your next mission, you won't be able to have a proper meal for a while, right? You should eat up while you can. Build up your physical strength to prepare for the mission. I'm glad I asked you. That reminds me. Over a thousand years ago now, not long after the Adrestian Empire was founded, the first emperor and his army, with the aid of Saros, set out on a campaign to the north with the aim of unifying Fodlan. Meanwhile, in the northern reaches of Fodlan, Nemesis, the King of Liberation, raised an army to take down the Empire. Both armies clashed on the Teltine Plains, where Seros felled Nemesis. As a result, the conflict ended in a victory for the Empire. It's known as the Battle of Teltine. As one approaches the end of a war, the sacrifices only grow larger, don't they? The winning side musters their forces and attempts to strike a decisive blow, 
while those of the losing side make desperate attempts to turn the war in their favor. Neither side will give. I only wish we'd consider those who lose their lives in that struggle. I can appreciate that, but just because a choice is better does not mean that it's good. As long as he exists, Lady Edelgard will... I believe I have explained before that he is the one who commanded the likes of Solon and Kranya. Cornelia, whom we defeated at Aryan Road, was also one of his. An irksome sort. We must not fail to be rid of him. He is a maggot. Crawling in the filth of the world, feeding off the Empire like a parasite. Sir, do you mind if I complain about something? Well, personal? Of course you don't. This army is almost all single men. If that marital status came before or during the war, I'm not to say. The point is, I'm in charge of the infirmary. I wind up treating hundreds of men every week. I get to talk to all sorts of men from all walks of life, all of the time. And yet... Forget that. I can't even find a boyfriend. Marriage is just... <laughs> a joke. Just a sick joke. At this point, I'm just hoping you stay single too. Then at least we can share each other's misery. Indeed. When Edelgard first invited me to join this army, I, to be frank, thought her dream utterly ridiculous. But at my advanced age, I was tempted by the notion of chasing a seemingly impossible dream through blood, sweat, and tears. Five years on, the unification of Fodlan is slowly becoming a reality. Now, I feel, it may soon be possible to abolish the nobility and create a world where none need suffer due to crests. You need not say anything. I will stay by your side, and hers, to the very end. Professor, looks like we're finally getting to the end of this thing. Don't go dying on us now, all right? Not planning on it. If you're still alive when this is all over, then I'll have kept my word to Captain Gerald. Let's both live to see the dawn of a bright new age. Professor? This month, we will take all of the military force we can muster and advance to the kingdom capital of Ferdiad. I have no intention of retreating to Garrig Mach after we've come this far. We will only return after we've conquered Ferdiad and put an end to this war. Be sure to steal your heart and ready yourself for the battle ahead. Are you certain? If so, please help me raise the morale of our allies. Professor. Hey you, listen up. I've got something to report. The war is careening headfirst toward its grand finale. Do me a favor and get through this mess alive, okay? After the dust settles, maybe I'll go on to guard other entrances in other parts of the world. I'm a dreamer, my friend. Always have been. Fodlan unification is finally reaching its climax! 
I must surpass myself in the struggle to come if Her Majesty is to recognize my power. But don't you see? Your presence would diminish the grandeur of my achievements. The culmination of all my studies, all my magical experiments, shall be unleashed in battle! Hey! Oh, it's finally time to take on Ferdiad! Can't wait to get in there and show him what I'm made of. Hopefully, I get a go at that Dimitri guy before all is said and done. They say he has inhuman strength, yeah? Best way to find out is to throw fists with the guy. He may be the Tempest King of Ferdiad, but I'm the grappling king of the world. My domain is way bigger. Grab a front row seat if you can manage. These arms of mine will knock some sense back into that toe-head of his. Huh? I hear there was a pretty spectacular battle up there recently. But we don't hear a lot about that stuff. There was a lot of talk when it first started, but five years on, it's just a fact of life. What? There have been lots of battles on the surface recently? I hadn't heard. See what I mean? Right. If we win this next battle, it won't just be a victory against the kingdom, but also the church. Maybe they'll all die. Even the people from the church who lied to me and locked me up. I don't care either way. If they died, I would say, well, that happened, and move on. I don't owe them my compassion. They've never shown me any. Ah, yeah. Seems like a lot of people from House Road died in Aryan Road. I know Edelgard is saying it's the church's fault, and she hasn't been shy to express that. But that doesn't seem right to me. You should ask Edelgard or Hubert. They'd know more than I do. Some think that all we have to do is take down Ferdia to end the war. But I don't think it's quite that simple. Right. Hey, uh, where it is, Garrick Mach's starting to look like a real town again. With the Empire winning one battle after another, it seems like the end to the war is finally in sight. There's hope for recovery now. Even for Abyss. Looks like I've got them all. Nah, just wrapped up what I was doing. Need something, friend? Oh, you mean this. I use it to write down the names of everyone I've lost over the years. We lost a lot of lives back in the war. Some of them were only with me a little while. Some of them were family to me. Somewhere along the way, I figured I should record the names of those I've lost. The ones I failed to protect. There's nothing we can do for the dead. Not in this world. Not really, anyway. And it's not like we know what happens after. So writing their names down here, that's all just for me. For the one who's still around. After all, they deserve to be remembered. Even if they're not here to see it. We all shared the same dream. They lost their lives to build that dream. And as their leader, it's on me to remember them, however I can. Oh, you think so, do you? And here I thought I was just the heartless villain in your eyes. Well, anyway, make of my notebook what you will. It doesn't matter much to me. If you go before I do, I'll make sure to add you in here as well.
You heard me. I mean, you're not exactly one of my people, per se. At this point, I do have to admit that I... I can count on you. I kinda get the sense that if I hang around you, that dream I've been grasping for will become all the more real. So, do me a favor and don't go dying on me, okay? <laughs> Certainly aren't lacking in confidence, are you? Hmm, cat got your tongue? Looks like you want to say something but don't know how. That again? You don't give up easy, do you? All right, all right, I'll toss you a bone. My name's not actually my name, but it's the one I'm enrolled with here at the Academy. The one I've hung on to as the adoptee of House Row. Come to think of it, the last I heard someone use my real name was... <laughs> a very long time ago. From my mom. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll tell you. Perhaps if you decide to pursue that dream alongside me, you'll find out. Ah, the smell, the texture, the smooth finish. This region's tea is the finest in the world. Hello, Ferdinand. You seem to be in a good mood. What is that supposed to mean? Perhaps you expected me to hold a grudge against you after our duel. In fact, I have moved on. Have you now? Well, I'm glad to hear it. I took it hard at the time, I will confess. I always thought that I equaled you in skill, or even surpassed you. But you showed me that I do not come close to matching your talents. Yet a true noble does not give up in the face of defeat. I will continue my training, and one day I will be an elite warrior. That is the path I must take, as a noble and a man of honor. You really are in a good mood. Your determination is admirable. Yes, one day I will surpass your abilities, and I will defeat you in combat. Ferdinand, there's something I've been meaning to say to you for a while now. Honestly, I couldn't care less that you were of noble birth. Your fierce determination doesn't come from your bloodline. It's your own doing. The reason I value you and want to be friends with you is because of who you are, not who your family is. Hmm. I have something I would like to say to you, too. Certainly we must recognize the common folk who strive for greatness and attain it. But for those of us born into nobility, things are more complicated. From birth, nobles must excel. If we do not, we will be forced out of our houses. This environment breeds superior individuals, and they in turn recreate the rigorous environment for their own children. Without that cycle, there would be no political elite guiding the world towards prosperity. <laughs> so you're saying that the kind of world I'm striving to create is wrong? I would not go so far as to say your way is wrong, just that another way might be better. If you insist upon undoing the nobility, then we must build something in its place. We can provide free education for all, and then select the highest performing students for more intensive training and tutoring. I truly believe that people are products of their environment. Finding a way to educate the people. Interesting. I'm impressed by how much thought you've given this. No matter what shape the world takes, I'm sure I'll always need people like you by my side. People with strong principles who will argue with me and force me to consider ideas that are contrary to my own. Yes, exactly! Finally, Edelgard, you appreciate how important I am to your cause. I've always thought of you as a valued friend, Ferdinand. That's nothing new. Edelgard, I have to tell you something. I think now is the right time. Do you know what my ancestor Derek Von Eyre said after your ancestor defeated him? He said, You are an imperial beauty. Please, accept me as your husband. Halt, Ferdinand. There's a time and a place for everything. But that time is not now. Here again, I see. Of course, Your Majesty. I couldn't investigate this place freely when those of the church were around. Understandably. 
Now, about my proposal to create an institution for Crest and Relic research. I've decided to move forward with it. As for who will lead the charge... You want me to be in charge of the thing after all, don't you? <laughs> Actually, no. I was just considering some conditions for whoever applies for the job. Conditions? What kind of conditions? To start, I won't allow the position to be a secondary one. That excludes lords who are busy looking after their own territories. Are you suggesting landholding lords would have no means of applying? Quite the opposite. I'm looking for applicants with enough passion for the job that they're willing to relinquish any landholding rights they possess. They will be provided with necessities like food, clothing, and housing, but will receive no further compensation. That said, they will be free to take as much time off as they desire. Do you expect anyone to be interested in such an odd position? That's my hope. Have you gone mad? Demanding someone rescind their land rights and then provide no compensation? Even the unlimited time off is a rather discourteous perk to offer. No one would accept room, board, and endless time to research. <sighs> no one but me. Why must you... Why must I what? Why must you understand me so well? I asked you to consider the feelings of those below you. I never expected you to consider mine to this extent. I told you I'd figure out a way to make use of your talents that you'd find acceptable. Honestly, no woman has ever gone through this much trouble for me before. Then have you decided? Yes, I have. I would be most pleased to accept your offer, Your Majesty. It's strange. I never thought you and I would be able to sit together and drink tea like this. Drink tea, you say? But that does not smell like tea. The aroma. Would that be coffee by any chance? Imported from Dagda, I believe. I do not care for it myself. Your knowledge is impressive. Although I should expect nothing less from a noble, I suppose. Lady Edelgard surpasses you in nearly every respect. But I think, when it comes to positivity, you may actually exceed her. Excuse me? In a way, it is merely a mask for your tactlessness. But even so, your relentless optimism... Well, suffice it to say that it is your best quality. I... what? You are constantly striving to grow as a person to seek new knowledge, to push new limits. When others might get distracted or abandon their path, you never yield. In that aspect, at least, I think you are unmatched. Hubert, are you all right? Do you have a cold? Or the plague? Am I hearing a deathbed confession? Ugh, it is only a compliment. There's no need for such dramatic exaggeration. Dramatic, you say? I do my best to analyze others without emotion. Even if I find you to be a contemptible degenerate, I can still evaluate your abilities in an impartial way. So, because you assess people without emotion, you are totally confident in your appraisals. It seems I was wrong about you. Huh. You actually understand. Please, do not compliment me again, though. I find it quite unsettling. It is like hearing a snake sing an aria. At least put it in a letter next time. In the very unlikely event that there is a next time, I promise to put it in writing. <laughs> Is he looking for a fight with someone taller than him? The poor boy won't give up. This is it. Today's my day. Caspar's day. 
come get some. Yes, Caspar, just like that. Just as we practiced. Yes, dodge. Yes, perfect. Right there. He's open. Punch him right in the... Yes, Caspar, you did it. <laughs> and that's how it's done. Woo! And then I got him. Bam! Right in the solar plexus. <laughs> oh, I really wish you could have... Hey, are you even listening? This is when it starts getting real good. I'm listening. I am sad to say, however, that the tale is slightly less thrilling the fourth time through. You should be more excited. We finally won! We? Yeah, I couldn't have done it without your advice. You're a strategic genius, Linhart. Nonsense. Your strength carried the day. I just rambled on. You're the one who did the actual work. What's really amazing is how you wouldn't give up. Whoa. I've never heard you compliment me before. Yeah, I don't think I like it. <laughs> Seriously, though, I couldn't have done it without you. Like you said, I wouldn't give up on fighting, and I'm not gonna give up on this either. I should have expected that, I suppose. That's just the kind of guy you are, after all. I guess this friendship is something that we can never escape from. Ever. Are you saying you want to escape from our friendship? Not at all. Even if I did, our fates would not be so easily untangled. Ha! <laughs> you got that right. No one can break this bond. Even if we argue and butt heads sometimes, we'll never have to fight it out. And that's a promise. Understood. I don't desire to fight anyone anyway. This war is the last time I'll set foot on a battlefield. Well, that makes sense. Let's you and I come out the other side of this war alive and well, okay? That is a promise worth making. Definitely. And let's win this thing while we're at it. Yuritsa? What? <laughs> I've got it all figured out. Hmm? Your true identity. Hmm. If my detective skills are correct, then you are... The Death Knight, right? Everyone already knows that. Huh? What? Everyone knows? But how? Oh, and here I thought that I'd uncover your big spooky secret. Oh, Bernie, you're such a shut-in that you missed the biggest news in town. <sighs> so, here's the deal, Yuritsa. You've got to tell me a secret about you that nobody else knows. Why? Because! I sleuth for hours upon hours! That's got to be rewarded! Just stop. Oh, come on! Please? Oh, oh, I know! I've got it! Why do you wear that crazy-looking armor when you're pretending to be the Death Knight? Are you just into the look of it? You like spooky stuff? Well... I may have been drawn to that aspect. To look sinister. To embody death. Oh, I see. I thought maybe you put on that mask and armor because, just like old Bernie, you don't like talking to people. <laughs> there may be some truth to that. Talking to people is intolerable. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I think I'm sensing a real kinship between us. So, with that whole spooky getup on, it allowed you to speak to people with confidence. No. Oh, hey, Yurita. Don't tell anyone about this, okay? This is our little secret. I don't mind, but I also don't understand.
Hey. <laughs> Did you send for me, Emil? Stop gossiping about me. Gossiping? About you? Oh, you wound me, Emil. So what if your name falls from my lips now and then? If you speak of my past, there will be consequences. I am aware. I have been silent regarding you secretly being of House Bartels. No, when I speak of you, I bandy gentler truths, such as your fondness for kittens and ice cream. All the silly little details that make you seem human. Those details are nobody's business but mine. Oh, Emil, do you have any notion what the rank and file say about you? No. They use words like unapproachable, menacing, and inscrutable. Regardless of your skill with the blade, fighting a war as if it were a long series of duels will end in death. And that is why I do what I can to ingratiate you with the soldiers you lead. No thanks necessary. I see you are still unhappy with me. <laughs> Whatever do you mean? The battlefield is solitary in the end. I have no interest in camaraderie with soldiers. Are you implying that in combat, you are an utterly matchless warrior? That you can vanquish any foe single-handedly? That you need no cohort supporting you? How perfectly presumptuous! Even I can admit my reliance upon others. <sighs> While you fight, who stands beside you to gauge the tide of battle? Who eliminates the archers aiming for you? Who heals whatever injuries you might sustain? These are questions you should be asking yourself, Emil. I ask them for you because we are old friends. Always quick to cut to the heart of the matter. Just as you are ever an ache in my side. Whatever. But there is a truth in your words. However, it is not up for discussion. Stop gossiping about me. I shall consider it. Sorry. It looks like I'm going to have to leave you now. One day, I hope you'll give this ring to someone you love as well as I love her. interesting way of looking at life. Ah, it is you. Just at the right time. Oh, is it nighttime already? I must have gotten carried away. There is something I wanted to discuss. Something about you. I am starting to believe that you are a true hero. You hold the Lost Crest, you wield the Sword of the Creator, and you lead everyone in battle against great enemies. Not only that, but you are a strategist. You stand alongside rulers, supporting them, advising them. You do not seem particularly ambitious, and yet you accomplish so much. I am not exaggerating. Everything I said is true. I have been reading about the history of Fargus, you know. The kingdom's founder, Lug, the king of lions, had two advisors. One of them was Pan, the undesiring strategist. According to historical records, Pan wanted nothing for himself. He devoted himself entirely to Lug. He had tremendous power, 
but he never seemed concerned about his legacy. So in the old chronicles, there is hardly any mention of Pan's deeds. All that we know is that he helped Luke, his friend and leader. It is not surprising that you have never heard of him. I did not even know his name until recently. But when I watch how you conduct yourself, I feel that I am seeing the unknown deeds of Pan. It is only a thought, of course, but it makes me feel rather happy. Even if it is not in the pages of a history book, a life can be full of achievement. I know that I will never be greater than Edelgard. She will always surpass me. I am what I am. Like you and this undesiring strategist, I will do what I am called to do, even if no mark of me remains in the history books. Do you have a minute, Professor? I gotta talk to you. I've been thinking a lot about those brigands with the scorpion tattoos, and I realized something. I mean, I'll feel better if I get this off my chest, right? Okay, listen. I think... I can't deny who I am. I know you were right five years ago when you told me not to chase after that suspicious guy, but I still can't get over the possibility that he might have hurt those kids. I would have regretted not stopping him for the rest of my life. There's no way I could forgive myself. It sounds awful to say, but the safety of those kids is more important to me than the nights we lost. I'm sorry, Professor, but I can't promise that I won't disobey your orders in the future. I know, it's too big a risk to keep me around. I won't cause a fuss. I'll just pack my bags and... Wait, what? I, I guess so. You're really okay with me sticking around? Even if I might not always follow orders? People could get hurt if you let me keep doing things my way. Just like that? I, I almost can't believe it. I really struggled to come to this decision, you know? I want to stand by your side, but I won't stop standing up for what I believe in. I know I might cause trouble for everyone, but... I just... You know, I... Oh, I give up. I've got nothing else to say. I should have just kept my mouth shut. Yeah, I know. Thanks, Professor. Thanks for accepting me for who I am. I'm glad I get to keep fighting by your side. <laughs> you there! Ah, is there something I can do for you, Constance? Is there something you can do? Of course there is! Well, what is it? It ought to be plain. I do not follow. Please clarify what you mean. Have you forgotten the day I revealed to you my silly little dream? If you weren't paying attention, I shall be cross. Oh, yes. You must be referring to the oblique request you made concerning peaks and valleys. Not seeing a peak ahead of you, you hoped I might help lift you out of your lowly st- Precisely. You've summed it up completely. Now that you know of what I speak, I want you to forget it immediately. Act as if you heard nothing. You want me to forget the occasion you just asked me to remember? I see. Before I discard this memory entirely, might I be so bold as to ask why? Is it not obvious? I don't want my weakness bandied about. I vowed to restore House Nouvelle through my own grand achievement. Just as I would not abandon this dream, I would not accept it being handed to me. Though if I am to be quite honest, the real reason is that letting you in on this vulnerability was an indiscretion I won't repeat. I see. What a curious situation. I don't take your meaning. Five years ago, 
With the cladding of my highborn status stripped away, I was vulnerable and exposed. To borrow your words, I was in a valley, and a thick shroud of fog obscured the peak before me. Now, the cloud has lifted a bit, and I can see a glimpse of what lies ahead. And what, dare I ask, do you see? There is a towering cliff for you to scale, and a long, rocky path lying ahead of me. Rather than ascending separately, we can join hands and face these obstacles together. Then, we can reach the heights of our forebears. Or, dare I say, even higher. Even higher, you say? Now you remind me once more of the boy I knew. I have but one concern. And what might that be? That I shall outpace your laggardly efforts. Huh? I was being sincere, you know. <laughs> Frigid ocean waters! I can feel them already! Calm, calm. Just listen to me for a moment. There's something I need to tell you. The reason I worked for House Varley, Bernadetta, was to kill you. Ah, ha! I knew it! I always knew you were out to kill me! Sink me into the deep, dark, freezing depths! Hold on. House Varley? But... why? As you well know, theirs is one of the six great noble houses, the true rulers of the Empire. And you're the heir, with a crest. There were tons of people who wanted you wiped out. Like people who want to eradicate House Farley. Or a relative who wants the glory for themselves. That particular breed of treacherous nobility is the kind that'd hire a kid to do their dirty work. The first thing that kid would do? Get close to the target by befriending her. Find an in through, say, an assistant gig? This kid you're mentioning sounds real. That was you, wasn't it? Yours truly. My biggest mistake? Getting to know you. I crept into your room one night and readied my blade. The whole thing had been a breeze. Up until that moment, I couldn't bring myself to do it. While I hovered there, hesitating, your father came in. You know the rest. Why are you telling me all this? I'm so confused. Because I want you to look at it objectively. I was hired to kill you. Your father protected you from me. A filthy assassin. He was looking out for you. You're lucky to have a father who cares for you enough to do that. Father protected me? He protected me. Yeah. Why would I lie? At this point, I figure it's you who hates me. And not the other way around. I don't hate you, Yuri. But I mean, I do feel weird. But I don't know how to feel. I just... Can't we just be friends? Like back then? You want to be friends... with... me? The reason you couldn't kill me was because we were friends, right? Well... You were my first friend. My very first friend. The first person who played with me. The first person who went on adventures with me. The first... And you were the first friend I had to baby that much. What do you mean? Well, even so, you were the first friend who cared for me. The whole thing was probably a sham anyway. Though you know, even if it was, I did have a lot of fun with you. <laughs> I knew it! Hey, take this. Hmm? That smell. That sound. This is gold. A sizable stash of precious gold! What gives? Don't tell me you got your mitts on the Empire's vault. You fool. It's simply a reward. Nothing to get in a tizzy over. No way I can accept this, pal. Trust me, I haven't done anything to deserve it. Just shut up and take it. Call it your fee for 
providing me with information. What you told me. The tale from your mother's homeland? It really helped me. Anyway, if you don't actually need it, I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Maybe take your mom out for a night on the town? Looks like you're insisting then. Fine, I'll use it to buy her some good grub. But I thought you didn't actually find any answers in my little tale. Not quite, but it helped me in other ways. I've stopped vexing myself over unimportant details, like who I am or who I think I might be. That's all fine and good, but is it really worth its weight in gold? This is coin we're talking about! Look, do you want it or not? Is there something else you prefer? <sighs> wow, that was one hell of a sigh. Look, you're better than me at thinking and betting, but right in this moment, you're the fool. You. Do I like gold? Yes. Do I want it? Need it? Yes and yes. While we're at it, I like brawling. Women too. But there's something that I care about even more than gold, fighting, and women. Any ideas? Oh, this is tough. Mm. Let me guess. Hopelessly losing every bet you place? A good drink? You really think highly of me, don't you? Dead wrong. It's having a bash bro. A friend to fight with and fight for. Seems I was a bit off base there. I guess to you, everyone is either an underling or a business associate. But with a bash bro, there's no such thing as an overdue loan. No hierarchies or other nonsense. It's someone to trust, both in and out of battle. Someone to share life's ups and downs with. I see. No need to reward a bash bro, I suppose. That's the ticket. I know you were born into a world of trickery and exploitation, but you don't have to live like that anymore. Now you've got me! I'm not accustomed to talks like this, I must admit. Hmm. How can I frame this? Nobody even knows my real name. Are you actually comfortable confessing such a warmth towards someone so... cold? Clearly. No matter who you are or what you've done, I care about you. That won't ever change. <laughs> now that is fresh. I told you my feelings and you laughed. <laughs> You're one of a kind, pal. I'm sorry. I've got to admit, I thought I'd heard it all. But you've managed to surprise me. It's the first time anyone has ever said something so sincere without trying to get something out of me. I could try to say it again with more swagger, if that helps. Nah, no need. Bash Bros has a nice ring to it. From here forward, we are forever Bash Bros, friend. I've got your back, pal. Thank <laughs> you.